Hey, this is Arn Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. Okay, I know what you're thinking. You're looking at the title page of this tutorial and you're asking, Formface, wasn't that a villain from Dick Tracy? And also, it says hosted by Maltanen, but you just said that you're Aaron Rabinowitz. Did you change your name? Well, the answers are no and uh, no, respectively. I'm here doing the intro for an awesome tutorial which comes directly from the phenomenal training DVD, Making It Look Great 5, hosted by my good friend Maltanen, AKA Jersey Drozda, known to some as George. Now, George was a good monkey, but he was very curious. Okay, wait, uh, wrong video. But you know what, maybe not. While it's true our host is no primate with a propensity for getting into perilous and often humorous situations, he is, however, very curious and is always trying to find out what software can do if you push the right buttons. And using his powers of curiosity and ingenuity and a little bit of elbow grease, he's come up with a ridiculously cool technique for creating a slick pushpin toy effect as seen in the Radiohead House of Cards video, using nothing but trap code form and a roll of duct tape. And the duct tape is optional. If you're not familiar with trap code form, let me give you the skinny. Like its older brother, trap code particular, form is a particle generation system where the look of the particles is extremely flexible. But rather than generating temporary particles as most particle systems do, form creates a grid of particles that live forever. But in addition to particles being laid out on a flat grid, you can have multiple particle layers for creating real depth, and the particles can also be laid out in a sphere or even strings and the animation can be looped or even driven by audio, which means you can use form to create some really awesome motion graphics and effects. And if you don't have trap code form, you can always download a trial version from the Red Giant software website. So, with no further ado, from Making It Look Great 5, I give you Maltanen. Ah, it's a beautiful Sunday morning, at least from where I'm standing. And even though I wish you all the best, I really hope that it's raining outside for you because that way you can just sit back and relax and enjoy this next video I'm going to show you. Uh, so anyway, you're watching Making It Look Great number 5. My name is Maltanen and in this video I'm going to show you some basic functionality of trap code form uh, and we're going to create some cool graphics using trap code form. So let's take a look at what we'll be creating today. Uh, ain't that cool? And even though it looks very complex, it's actually very simple to do. So let's get started. Here I have a footage of my very best friend Gregor, who's working with me at my studio. He's a 3D artist and he took this footage to create his avatar uh, that he can use on forums and maybe on his website as well. The website is going to be finecg.com and it's going to hold video tutorials exclusively on 3D Studio Max. So stay tuned another great tutorial resource is coming your way. So we're going to take this footage and by using trap code form we're going to make it look great. Let's just start. Let us create a new composition from this footage and there's nothing uh, there's not much that we actually have to do here uh, except that we're going to apply Coloramax. As you remember from the final render, we're not going to have too many colors. We're just going to have some basic uh, shades of blue and we're going to configure that in trap code form. But before we start, we need to prepare this footage so that trap code form acts the way we want it to. So, first of all, I'm going to convert this into ramp gray and this basically turns this image to black and white as you see and by using this color wheel we can crush the blacks a little bit more and basically make this footage more intense. I don't want to see anything except his face and maybe a little bit of this shirt. Uh, so let's create another one. Now we're just making this look a little bit blown out. I don't like that look. So let's just make it just a little bit blown out and a little bit darker as well. And I think this should do just fine and okay so much for the preparation let's get to the interesting stuff so let's create a new composition by dragging this comp into a make new comp button we can call this final and we need to turn this layer off because we're not going to use it as a visual 
we're going to use it as a source for trap code form. So to apply trap code form, we need to create a new solid. And of course, we need to apply trap code form. And here we go. Let me just turn off the transparency grid for now. And this is the default look of trap code form. Not very interesting, but if we put the camera in and take the orbit camera tool, you see that those are basically three layers made of particles. And this is how the trap code form looks in default. And let me just go quickly through the settings here. Uh, we can disperse the layers, we can twist the layers, uh, we can do all sorts of stuff. We also have the very powerful fractal field uh, that is present in particular as well if you know that plugin. So let's just affect the size and affect the opacity a little bit and maybe change the displays to a little bit something like that. So you get the point, right? You get the picture. Uh, so let's just reset all the options and get right to the interesting stuff. So the first things first, we need to change the amount of layers in Z space to one because we're not going to use uh, more than one. Well, maybe we're going to use it, but for now one is all we need. And the second thing, pretty important when using form with any sort of footage as a source for displacements and other parameters, is to make it the same size as the footage. And our footage is actually 600 by 300, so let's just type that in. And hit enter to confirm. And size in Z, we don't really need to uh, touch that, so let's make it zero. And we need to also increase the density on each axis. As you see when I increase the density here we're getting the particles are getting more and more intense and in the end we can get a solid layer like this. But this is way too much particles than we actually need and after doing some tests I found out that for this purpose actually settings that are 150 and 75 is exactly what we need and that is actually one-fourth of the resolution that way we have a solid grid and that works for us so that's the basic setup now let's go to layer maps and oh layer maps are where the power of trap code form lies so let's start with the color and alpha and we choose the source layer and that is our Greg layer and the next parameter is to set what values of the layer we want to map to which values of trap code form and in this case we're going to take the lightness of the layer because as you remember we made it black and white and we're going to map it to the alpha of the particles and the last step is to choose the map over parameter which basically means on which axis we want to map the uh, original footage to so in our case x and y is just fine you can already start to see the footage being displayed in the particles. And this look is pretty interesting on its own, but we can make it look even better. So the next step would be changing the appearance of the particles. So let's just go to the particle section of trap code form and we can choose the glow sphere. And I found out that using a glow sphere with the footage uh, as a source uh, really gets better results because you can de decrease the amount of particles while increasing the intensity of the footage as you see in here. This is glow sphere and this is the regular sphere so you see the difference it's quite obvious. We can change the feather to zero that makes it stand out even more and we can increase the size of the particle to two. I think that should... okay yeah that really makes the difference. So that's fine and what else? Uh, oh yes colors of course colors and we can go to quick maps and here's the color map and I'm actually going to use the, a preset and this is the preset in here and we want to map it over the Z just for now because I think we're going to increase the amount of particles in Z just like we had in the default configuration we had three layers so we're going to have multiple layers of Gregor I think uh, 
You know what? Maybe let's just try it right now. Why not? Let's increase the size in Z to 10 and particles in Z to 5. And this parameter is what actually makes the difference. Okay, this doesn't look so great, but that's because the particles are being blended in the additive mode and we don't want that. We want it to be in normal mode and oh yes, that makes the difference. And please note that we are working in 32 bits per channel and to change the setting you need to hold the Alt key and click in here to change it from 8 bit to 32 bit. Okay, we got the color set, we've got the lightness to alpha set, and what else? We're going to use some displacement so we can set it up right now, and we want to do it individually for each axis, because I'm only interested in displacing the particles on, on the z-axis, so basically that they will go uh, closer and further away from the camera. And the layer for that is also going to be Greg. And we need to set it over X and Y just like we did before. And oh yeah, we're already starting to see a difference here. And I think we can set the strength. Let's just see how it looks. Looks very interesting already, but that's not exactly the look that we were after. So let's just try something else. Let's set it up to negative 25. By doing some testing, I found out that this is the actual setting that works best in this case. And I can just put a quick camera to show you how that looks when we're going to orbit around it. Okay, this, this is interesting. This is interesting. I hope you already see how many possibilities lie uh, with this simple technique. Uh, but let's stay focused on what we're actually doing, not on what we could do. And let's go ahead and make some other adjustments. We set the color and alpha, we set the displacement. I think that we can also set the size. Let me just check the transparency grid. Um, okay, that looks fine. But I think that if we're going to set the size as well, using the exact same settings, so layer, drag and map over X and Y, we're going to get some more interesting results. Oh yes, this looks a little bit more contrasty, and that starts to look really good. Now that was slick. And we'll finish this project next week in part two. Or if you just can't wait for part two, or want to learn how to do all the cool stuff that you're seeing here on your screen, then check out Making It Look Great 5 and of course the other four DVDs in the series at motionworks.com.au. By the way, that's the official website of John Dickinson, whose Crocodile Dundee-esque voice can be heard in many of the intro tutorials here at the Red Giant Software website. And I believe that Motionworks is offering a discount on Making It Look Great 5 to go along with this week's tutorial, so check it out. And hey, remember, if you don't have trap code form, you can always download a trial version of the software to follow along. And just for watching this tutorial, we're going to give you a discount on trap code form as well. Go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get this and other special Red Giant TV deals. Now these are time sensitive discounts. They won't last forever. All coupon codes expire seven days from the launch date of each tutorial. So again, go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get the coupon codes for the most current Red Giant TV discounts. And new to RedGiantTV.com, make sure to subscribe to the Red Giant TV RSS feed to get notified about the latest tutorials, or subscribe to the Red Giant TV podcast through iTunes or whatever software you use for your podcast subscriptions. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. See you next time. MotionWorks Video Workshops presents Making It Look Great 5. Design, production, and workflow techniques for Adobe After Effects. We can see a lot of distortion going on. So let's just analyze what's going on here. Well, I obviously know what's going on here because I made it.
hosted by Multanon. Okay, sweet. This looks pretty good on its own, but we're going to make it look even better. Imagine that. And we want it to basically look like the blood is dripping, so to actually do that, we need to go to the transform and play with the offset. If we're going to move it down, this is what we're going to get. And this is actually pretty fun. Maybe let's change the threshold again. Okay, yes, that's it. That's it. See how it gets intensified in the text, but then it just fades out as the text is gone? Very, very nice. The trick here is to actually make this brush paint over our comb and we want to use whatever it paints as an alpha mat. The most commonly used method is to simply take the pen tool and just draw a shape around our subject, right? And I don't know about you, but I don't like additional work in my project, so let's just get rid of this path and I'm going to show you a quicker way to do that. Now that's a pretty nice comp, but that's not all. Would you believe if I told you that we can achieve the same effect without using any pre-comps and just by using standard presets? Work smart, work fast, look great. Okay, this doesn't look so great, but that's because the particles are being blended in the additive mode and we don't want that. We want it to be in normal mode and oh yes this form grid actually lights up according to rhythm of this sound file so let me just show you how I did that make sure your work gets noticed making it look great 5 available now